Now, we are so excited today because we have a special guest in the studio with us, Evangelist Rob Rodosti. It's so lovely to have you here with us. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm blessed to be here. Yeah, welcome to the show. Um, Rob, like, uh, our audience might not know who you are today, and a lot of people will, I'm sure, but some people won't. Tell us a little bit about your ministry. So I've got my card here that you're a teacher and an evangelist and ministry, and I know before the show you were telling us how much you were travelling. So tell us what, like, what's going on, what are you doing at the moment, and you know, what is Jesus doing with you and through you right now? Amen. Well, uh, we run a ministry called Church 14 Global, and uh, we're based in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. We're kind of doing a ministry-based thing, equipping and doing some Bible school stuff. Um, and our passion is to help people detox from lies they believe about themselves and about God. And that's really where a lot of the equipping comes in. But missions is and has always been one of my number one passions. And so mm -hmm. um, since probably 2002 you know, or three, I've been traveling, preaching. Now it's been boots on the ground in over 60 countries. Wow. Wow. Lots of 1040 window type areas, you know, where a lot of people, you know, I, I like to say I've been to countries you don't even know exist, you know, because <laughs> it's just all these Can't amazing pronounce. places with people that are just so loved by God. Yeah. And uh, so we're in the midst of some church planning in Ukraine, um, touring, you know, equipping people in, in, in things we're writing in our books. And honestly, I, my head kind of is, I'm scrambled eggs sometimes. Yeah, I'm like, it's all, it's all the grace of God <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I don't even know oh, wow. how this is happening, but, but, but what a, what an honor and privilege to, you know, see the gospel, not just, uh, go out, but applied to people's lives and see that transformation happen. And how are you so equipping people? Like what, what do you see in those churches? You know, you, you're going out and preaching, you know, and I guess you preach on what the Lord has led you to. But what, what's the, you know, what do you see Jesus doing in all those churches in these countries that we don't know? Their names. Well, I believe we're in the midst of actually of a, of a reformation right now, you know, a historic reformation. Sometimes um, you, you hear terms over and over so much that you get kind of tired of, of, of seeing things not come or maybe it didn't come the way you thought it was going to come. Mm -hmm. And I like, so I, I would say I'm seeing that um, we're, we're in a revival from revival. <laughs> we're getting revived from revival. We're getting reformed from reform. You know, he's bringing us to this deep place and uh, one of the biggest things I see is, is people are coming out of legalism. They're, wow. they're getting to just know the joy of God and, and, and kind of dropping some of the things that were besetting them before and causing them to trip up and get into religious condemnation. Wow. It's one of the big things that we're seeing right now. Uh, and then, uh, and, and almost like a, a, a reinterpreting for this culture. It's not rewriting, like reinventing the wheel or some new gospel, but it's like a fresh light on what's always been true. But for this generation, because we're dealing with things, let's face it, that it's just different than even what we've seen previously. And so I see God touching people and reaching people in ways that I just never even imagined was possible, you know, and it's it blows my mind. So encouraging. Now, Rob, you've got this tremendous testimony of coming from devil worship um, to Christ. Um, and, you know, by the power of the Holy Spirit, your life has been tremendously changed. Um, you know, we're coming up to Pentecost, which is always such an exciting time of the year in the Christian calendar. That first time where the Holy Spirit fell in power upon God's people. What difference has the Holy Spirit made in your life? Wow, that's that's an awesome question. <laughs> and I love that question because the Holy Spirit is is the key to being led and guided into all truth. That's what he does best, mm. you know. So you can be introduced, you can stand in the doorway, but you need the guide to show you around. And that's really what the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, who he is. And so um, so for me, I like to say that it was kind of a you know, there were a lot of things even growing up that I was taught, you know, stay away from this, stay away from that. But it was actually Holy Spirit stuff. And so when I met Jesus, I had a radical encounter with him in 2001 as a devil worshiper. Um, and then I, I, I encountered Christians doing things that they were saying was the Holy Spirit. I was very, very mm. kind of, you know, I, I just wasn't sure how I felt about all that. I was kind of reserved. Believe it or not, me reserved, right? But I was. And I just, I wanted to know, God, is this really you? And so I, I I said, Lord, everything that's actually you, I want you to come in my personal time with you and I want you to do it and I'll, and I'll believe and I'll, and I'll go whatever direction you're leading. And he did. And that started probably a few months after I came to faith, um, you know, like with the gifts of the Holy Spirit and different mm -hmm. things. But sometimes I just had to be open for the Holy Spirit to 
to drop something on me in the moment. And it reminds me of Acts chapter 10. You know, it's one of my favorite stories in the whole scripture where Peter is in the middle of preaching his sermon, which was probably, you know, just what he planned to do. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit fell. And everyone who was in, the, in earshot, you know, uh, were all filled with the Holy Spirit and yeah. everything changed, everything shifted. Wow. And so that's kind of how I feel like it's always been for me. It's always been the Holy Spirit showing up and saying, you think you have me all figured out? Mm. I'm about to fall. And, mm. or, you know, you think, you think you've got it all together? I'm about to fall. Mm. And it, it challenges my theology, my love everything all always you know and so um it's to me it's fun it's an adventure you know knowing the holy spirit and i and and i just yeah that's that's <laughs> what i have to say about that i mean yeah, i mean what's it like that. when the holy spirit falls like that you know like um what is it that you experience what is it that you see like how how do you know so usually it's because it's something i didn't plan number one right um it's it's something that i couldn't even have thought up <laughs> number mm. two um and it's something that I have to respond to, like, I, like I okay, I know this didn't come from me. I need to respond to this. I need mm. to partner with this right now. Mm. So it's almost like every time he shows up, there's like this time sensitive invitation. Mm. Will you partner with me in this? And so I've learned that I, I love to say yes. And I don't always know exactly how that's going to pan out. But usually, uh, not usually, every time it completely blows my mind, you know. Yeah. It is just such a wonderful journey that we're all on, isn't it, as, as Christians and in this friendship that we have with Jesus. Amen. Now, uh, we are going to take a short, short break, but do stay tuned because we're going to have more from Rob after the break. And he's going to be talking a little bit about evangelism and we're going to get him to give a bit of an altar call as well. So do stay tuned. Yeah, welcome back to today's Standing Together, where we're joined by Rob Rodosti. Now, it is just such an awesome privilege as a Christian to be able to have this relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. But maybe you are watching today and you don't know who Jesus is. You've never heard of the gospel. You've never heard of the good news. But maybe you've just switched on the channel today, just like Gita had in that testimony that we heard earlier on. And you want to know more. Maybe you're searching for hope. Maybe you're searching for answers to some big questions that you have going on in your life. Well, we believe here at God TV that Jesus is the answer to all of your needs. Now, Rob, I would love it if you would just stare straight into your camera right there and just give an altar call. Absolutely. First of all, Holy Spirit, I thank you that every person that's watching this family around the world, that you've led them to this station for such time as this right now. And I want to tell you, my friends, that you were engineered to know God. You are created to know Him. You're created to hear His voice. You're created for fellowship. And, and listen, I want you to know this is not just some belief system that we're trying to push on you. This is so much better than that. You're created for unbroken fellowship with the one who created you. He loves you. And so right where you are right now, I just want you to take a minute and I want you to say, okay, Jesus, I don't, maybe you, you feel like I don't really know about all this, but Jesus, reveal yourself to me. Jesus, reveal yourself in me. If this Holy Spirit thing is real, send me the, send me the Spirit. Mm, I, I want to feel the Spirit. Amen. Can I feel the Spirit? Can I see something? And, you know, it may not always be that you'll feel something or hear something, but you may right now. And I'm sure you're going to have lots of testimonies. But just take a moment and say, Jesus, I believe in you. Yeah, Jesus, Forgive, I believe me. You. Forgive me. I believe in what you've done for me. Reveal yourself me. to me. Reveal yourself in me right now. Amen. You know, he's really good at revealing himself in what we'd consider the least of these. I mean, who was I? I was this young guy lost in addiction and the occult and Jesus, he chased me down. And, and I never thought I could be forgiven. I never thought I could be loved like that. And you can too. Mm, amazing, amen, amazing. Amen. Well, if you have been touched today and you have decided to give your life to Christ, then please get in touch or check out our new believer page mm. at God.tv. We would love to hear from you. We'd love to hear your testimony. We'd love to give you lots of resources to help you on your journey, uh, including helping you plug in to a local church. So call the number on your screen or write in and let us stand with you today as you uh, learn all about your Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
Yeah, what a privilege it is to be able to lead people to Jesus. And, you know, we never know all of the stories about what's happening, that your side of the television screen, your side of the mobile phone. But we are just so encouraged by those testimonies that we do here. And, you know, if you do have a testimony, a story of hope that you want to share with us, then you can do that as well on our webpage. Welcome back. Well, we're here with our friend, Pastor Rob. Rob, like, I couldn't let you leave without you giving us some help and some tips about how do we be uh, evangelists how do we be better evangelists you know we hear from people at home you know that you know they've they've got these different gifts and they want to use them and sometimes uh, it's a bit of a scary thing to share your faith with other people you know and um, I think you and I are lucky right so we probably are evangelists and we go out there and it feels very natural but you know Emma I guess you're you're more prophetic yeah and, yeah. and you know like it can be scary right I, I always say though evangelism is the one gift that you cannot run from whether you like it or not <laughs> the Great Commission says go into all the world to all of us all so the what, nations what, you know how, <laughs> how could you encourage people at home um, to want to share their faith what can they be praying for uh, and, and like what like how what tips can you give them about you know, being an evangelist. Yeah. Well, um, I know, you know, for me, for a very long time, I had kind of a very, uh, I, I knew what, what I was taught about it. And I kind of did it the way that I was taught to do it mm. until I started to say, okay, Holy Spirit, help me be more effective. And, you know, what can I, and so I'll share just a, a minute of, of kind of some of the things that he's taught me. Um, and because for me, I, I have a different paradigm of evangelism than I used to. It's not so much about, hey, let me come over here. Let me convince you that my belief system is correct. You yeah, know, like that's, yeah. that's not the heart behind evangelism at all. You know, yeah. it's more like coming alongside someone and saying, there is a gift with your name on it. Can I help you unwrap that gift? Like, you know, and so you know how our God, he calls things forth from the end is from the beginning. Yeah. And that's really what evangelism is. It's very prophetic, even just as an act. I, I remember one time I had a, uh, someone who identified as a witch, you know, in, in the meeting. Well, that's happened many times, but, um, and, uh, and, and she interrupted in the middle of the meeting and she was screaming and all this. And I went over and instead of kicking her out or something, I, I just kind of went over and I said, can I just share with you for a few minutes, you know, and, and I just begin to prophesy into her who she is in Christ and mm. how God feels about her. And, you know, by the end of that encounter, she was weeping. She had this radical encounter with Jesus. Yeah, wow. She yeah. even had a vial of blood that she used in like spells. And together we smashed it outside and people begin to be healed after we smashed the vial wow. of blood on the ground, you know, but, it, and, and she, and she said to me, I never knew that God could feel this way about me. Because she was believing lies, you know? And so for me, it's about, you know, Acts 26, 18, opening their eyes that they turn from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they might receive. Not so God can control them, not so their lives won't be fun anymore, but so they can receive forgiveness of sins and their inheritance, you know? And so for me, um, it's not, hey, let me convince you that this is right or that that is right. It's like it's this invitation into a family. Yeah. If I could, if I could define evangelism by one phrase, I wrote this small book called supernatural evangelism. This is what it's all about. And uh, I would say it's serving heavenly adoption papers. That's really, oh, wow, that's so good. That's really what it is, you know. And you're so right. I mean, when you when we think back and we reread those stories of how Christ himself encountered with people, he didn't try to convince people of who he was. He didn't try to, um, you know, force the, the, the Christian belief system on them. He was so, so gentle and so loving. And it was a conversation and it was natural. You know, I think about the woman at the well and how he just met with her at the place that she was at and just talked into her life and spoke life. Mm. And I guess, you know, that's, that's, that's evangelism, right? That's just coming alongside people, people loving God, loving thy neighbor. Um, and then out of that, so much is birthed. Yeah, and you know, I wanna encourage people, it's not a dead work. It's not something, it's not something that you just accomplish without loving people or mm. without even getting to know people. And so a few years back, I remember I, I thought, I wanna know this person's name but more than I want to just try to get them to believe the way I believe, I actually want to know them. I want to, mm. I want to hear about their life, you know, yeah. and I believe that's how the Holy Spirit works. You know, he is the spirit of adoption. And in the Greek, it's the word weothesio, which I was ministering in Greece. And I asked them, what does this mean? And they said, it means you've been put into God, wow. into his bloodline, into his lineage. And that's the spirit, you know, who convinces us 
of what Jesus has actually accomplished and uh, causes us to participate in this family of God, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so that, to me, uh, it's, it's a fun thing. It's not, it's not more work. It's not a boring mm -hmm. thing. It's, I get to help people unwrap this gift, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, that, that excites me. Yeah, it makes <laughs> so sense. So good, so good. It makes sense. And, and I think, you know, you said about serving heavenly adoption papers. And, and for me, that was a big thing. You know, I went to a funeral here in England and they say really specific words about, you know, entering heaven and things mm -hmm. like that, especially, you know, in the Church of England. And, uh, you know, I had this question, um, you know, who the person whose funeral it was, I'm not going to say, but I was like, I wonder if they are in heaven. Like, a, mm. did they ever give their life to Christ? You know, and I had all these questions. And ever since that day, I, I, I kind of, if I ever have any doubt about sharing my faith, I think, oh no, I, I, I have to do this because what if this is the only opportunity mm. that this person has to hear the gospel, you know, and to yeah. understand that they have a, a seat next to Christ in heaven for eternity yeah and and that's the impetus for me is i feel like you know it's this rescue center and and i just couldn't stand the thought of people not having mm. that opportunity i love that you use the word rescue because it's really what the gospel is it's a rescue mission and yeah. you know and and part of that can be rescuing people from uh, things that are keeping them under religious condemnation too. You know, um, First John four says we love him because he first loved us. Mm. We don't we don't love him so that he'll love us back. A lot of times evangelism is done from that perspective, but we love him because he first loved us. Mm. And so it, it just it's it, it's beautiful, you know. And we're compelled by love, like you were just mm. saying. We're not compelled by you know, uh, I have to do this because I'm a believer or, you know, performance-based anything. Yeah. You know? Rob, it's so good and, and we're running out of time. So I just want to give you the opportunity, if you can just let the people at home know, like if they want to get in touch with you or they want you to come and get involved with their ministry or speak at their church, like how can people get in touch with you um, admit, and like just remind people of the book that you wrote that they can get hold of as well? Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, what an honor. I would love to, you know, to serve. If you're feeling to connect, if you have questions, um, you can go to church14.com, church14, real simple. Um, you can email us info at church14.com. And then, of course, you can find me on Facebook, R-O-B-R-A-D-O-S. T-I. And on our website, uh, Ian, we've got uh, like a, an online store. We've got, you know, some cool shirts. Actually, this one, straight out of legalism. I mean, that one. Uh, we've got some books, my autobiography about how Jesus delivered me from Satan worship and all that. That's on there, as well as my book, Happy Holiness and the New Big Bad Doctrine Detox that's coming out just now. And that'll be available on there as well. Awesome. Excellent. That's going to keep us busy, isn't it? Yeah, That's it going is, to keep yeah. us in reading till Christmas. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been so lovely to spend time with you today, Rob. I think we've all learned a little bit more about what it means to be an evangelist and the power of the Holy Spirit, which we just can't get enough of here at God Amen. TV. So thank you so much. That's what I love about and you guys. We, <laughs> and we're going to be praying for you. I know thank you've got you. some big trips coming up. So, you know, all, all our blessings upon you and your wonderful family. So thank you. Thank yeah, you. Good. So we hope you have enjoyed today standing together. It's all about about us all being encouraged and as the show says standing together so from pastor rob Dusty, from my friend emma and from me we just say thank you so much thank you for standing with us in the india campaign and thank you for being part of what god is doing on the earth today and together we can evangelize and share his name we hope you enjoyed this episode let us know how it impacted you Send your prayer request to god.tv forward slash prayer today.